Okay, we don't have questions over that. Let's see, on the exam, are you able to extend the time? I've already extended it a little beyond what you would get if we were in a face-to-face -face class. Um, but I will consider that for the next one. Not much, but maybe a little bit. I put in 80 minutes. Uh, normally you would get 75 max, and that's assuming we started right at the start of time and ended right at the end. But I was thinking 80 minutes would be about right. So I'll consider that for the next one. Any other questions? You're welcome. All right, then let's go ahead and jump into chapter three. In chapter three, we're introduced to the complex number system in section 3.1 and then we get a little more in depth into uh, quadratic equations, functions, zeros, models, and so on. So those are functions whose degree is two. That means the highest exponent is two. We will later be looking at graphs of quadratic functions. We'll solve rational and radical equations. And then equations and inequalities with absolute value. And then we'll start into polynomial functions and their modeling. So today we are going to start with the complex number system. So an important aspect to that is I. And you've probably seen it, you've been introduced to it, not just as a letter, but as a mathematical term. And it means the square root of negative one. Because as we've said, we can't take the square root of a negative number, it doesn't exist. What we're saying in reality is it's not a real number. There is an imaginary number and that's where this I comes from. It can exist when you take the square root of a negative. But the question I usually ask with square roots is when you're taking the square root, what number times itself gives you the number under the radical sign? And there isn't a number that exists that you can multiply by itself to get negative one. Because a negative times a negative is a positive, and a positive times a positive is a positive. So we would always end up with a positive radicand, that number under the radical. But sometimes when we're working through a formula, we end up with a negative under this radical sign. And up to now, we would say, well, that means there is no solution. And again, what we're really saying is there is no real solution. There is an imaginary solution. And again, that's where this I comes in. If I were to square both sides here, so you get I squared, well, to square a square root, you end up with the radicand. So I squared is negative one, if I is the square root of negative one. And interestingly enough, if I were to cube i, well, that's like i squared times i. And if i squared is negative 1, negative 1 times i is negative i. If I were to raise i to the fourth power, well, that's like i squared times i squared. So that's like negative 1 times negative 1. Well, that's a positive 1. Let me uh, kind of expand on this a little bit. If I've got i to the fifth, well, that's just like i to the fourth times i. 
and i to the fourth is one, one times i is i. i to the sixth, well, that's like i to the fourth times i squared. i to the fourth is one, i squared is negative one, so we've got one times negative one, we're back to negative one. i to the seventh, that's like i to the fourth times i cubed. I to the fourth is one. I cubed is negative I, so we're back to negative I. You can see this whole thing repeats over and over again. I eighth, that's like I to the fourth times I to the fourth, which is one times one, and that's one. I to the ninth, that's like a couple of I to the fourths. times an i, one times one times i, that's i, and we're just going to repeat over and over again. So you can see no matter what I have as an exponent, if it's greater than four, I can always take it back to these first four. So I recommend you memorize those four, because anything else is a multiple of those. So that's a good spot to start. And let's take an example, i to the 35th power. And that's like i to the 4th raised to the 8th power. This 4 times 8 is 32. And I'm left with a remainder of 3. i to the 4th is 1. So I've got 1 to the 8th power times i cubed, we've already said i cubed is negative i. So i to the eighth, or one to the eighth, which is one times negative i, is negative, what am I writing? Negative i. So no matter what the power is, we can simplify that out. Notice what I did was I divided the 35 by four, That goes in eight times. Eight times four is 32. Subtract that, I've got a remainder of three. So this three was what came up here. That was the remainder. The eight, I just wrote up here above i to the fourth. This whole section is gonna turn out to be one. So it's one times i raised to the remainder power. And that can be simplified to one of these four. You will have some problems in the homework that are like that. i to the 72nd power, for example. And we'll just work them out the same way. i to the 72nd power is like i to the fourth. How many times does 4 go into 72? It looks like 18 times. 4 times 18 is 72. So that's 1. The book talks about dividing by 2, but then you've got to potentially worry about that negative jumping in there. I like to divide by 4, since that's a positive 1. And then it's just the remainder I have to look at. And that's kind of later in this section, but I did want to share that now. I do want to keep those four around. Complex numbers are numbers that are written with a, a real and an imaginary portion. And they are always written in the A plus B I format. Where A is the real portion, and B is the imaginary portion. So we can really write any number in this format, even 32. Well, that's 32 plus 0i. I could write 3i in this format. That's 0 plus 3i. 
So you can see we can write any number in this complex number format. It's real common to see something like 2 plus 3i as our complex number. Now I've told you, and I'm not the only one who's told you, I'm sure, but we've said we can't graph these imaginary numbers, and we're going to change that. Perhaps it's not fair, but we will. We'll not use the x and y axes, we'll use real and imaginary as the axes. So now we may have this point that I'm talking about here, 2 plus 3i, that's 2 on the real, 3 on the imaginary, and there's our point, 2 plus 3i. And we do that so that we can take advantage of things like the Pythagorean theorem and some other options that become available once we're graphing these. Kind of made up, I mean, it's imaginary, so it's not real. You can't really pace two in the real world and three in the imaginary world, unless you've got a fancy closet that allows you into Narnia, but the reality is you can't really graph these in the real world. So we're looking at ways to extend beyond and allow us to imagine the square root of a negative exists. And this really does tie into our quadratic equations that are coming up in section 3.2. Because we're going to talk about the zeros which is where that crosses the x-axis, and not all parabolas cross the x-axis. And if that's the case, they would have an imaginary zero. That they don't really cross, because the parabola starts either above or below the x-axis and goes the other direction. And so graphing on a real versus imaginary allows us to expand beyond just the real world and imagine math continuing on. And so let's take a look at, well, not just that, but of how we can deal with this I business. So if I had Say the square root of negative 7. One of the things we can do with the radical is we can split it. Let me show you what I mean by that. If I had the square root of 32, I can split that into the square root of 2 times the square root of 16. Because 2 times 16 is 32. And one of the reasons I might want to do that is the square root of 16 is an integer. And so now I could, I've got the square root of 2 times 4, which I would write 4 root 2. And I do that so that it's clear that the 4 is not inside the radical. But I've simplified the square root of 32 to 4 root 2, pulling out part of that. So that's a time you would have probably seen radicals split before. And we're going to split this square root of negative 7 into the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 7. The square root of negative 1 is i, so we have the square root of 7, and sometimes I'll bring a little tag down to show that it's over i. The square root of 7i would be the square root of negative 7. Now I do want to caution you that we need to handle the negative first before we multiply things together. Let me show you what I mean by this. The square root of negative 10 times the square root of negative 10. If we were to just multiply them together like here and take us over to there, that looks like it ought to be the square root of 100, which is 10. Because a negative times a negative is a positive, right? 
it doesn't quite work out that way because we have to handle the negatives first. So this becomes I root 10 times I root 10. And now we've got I times I, which is I squared. Square root of 10 times the square root of 10 is the square root of 100. I squared is negative 1. The square root of 100 is 10. We actually end up with negative 10. It's the product of square root of negative 10 times the square root of negative 10. Now that makes sense. Anytime you square a radical, you end up with what's underneath. But I'm just really highlighting here that we had to take care of that negative first in order to end up that way. If we didn't, if we just multiplied those two radicands together, we would have ended up with a positive and therefore would have been wrong. So make sure you handle that negative first. But once you do that, you're good to go. Let's look at the square root of negative 48. That's like the square root of negative 1 times what looks like the square root of 3 times the square root of 16. Because 3 times 16 is 48. Square root of 16, once again, is a, an integer. Square root of negative 1 is i. So we have... 4 times i times root 3, so 4 root 3 i, would be the square root of negative 48. Now, some of your calculators will do that for you. Depends on the calculator. Lots won't, but some will. And so it might be worth checking out your calculator to see if you can type in the square root of negative 48 and have it give you this format. Sometimes you have to go into the mode and change it to the complex mode. That's not how it's spelled, but that's how I see it on my calculator. Clearly, we're talking complex. But sometimes you have to change that mode before it will allow you to use I. But some calculators will let you do that. I have a Casio FS. 150, let's see, I've got it right here. FX 115 ES plus that will allow me to go into complex mode and use I. It's pretty handy, but like I say, we don't really need it because we know this process. And because we know this process, we can simplify it down pretty well ourselves. So that allows us to handle complex numbers. Now let's go ahead and practice some more math with these. If we've got 8 plus 6i, and to that we are adding 3 plus 2i. What we do is we add the real numbers together and add the imaginary numbers together. So 8 plus 3 is 11. 6i plus 2i is 8i. So that's how we would add these complex numbers. Kind of like adding like terms. Subtraction be, would be this, a similar thing. 4 plus 5i minus 6 minus 3i. Again, worry about our real numbers and worry about our complex numbers separately. 4 minus 6 is negative 2. 5i minus negative 3i is plus 8i. So we were able to subtract those just fine. Watch your signs. Make sure that this minus sign kind of gets distributed through there. That would be important. I don't want to forget that at all. Okay, so we've got some more people. I want to get everybody marked here who's here. DJ, I see you. We've got Eric, Honoria, Igor, and Phil. 
sure I'm pronouncing everybody's names right. All right. Multiplication throws a little twist on it, as you might imagine. How about 1 plus 2i? times 1 plus 3i. Like with our other uh, binomials, we'll foil this. So we've got first, outside, inside, last. So first, we've got 1 times 1, which is 1. Outside is 1 times 3i. That's 3i. Inside is 2i times 1, so that's 2i. Last, 2i times 3i is 6i. So let's combine some like terms. We've got like terms here, and i squared is negative 1. So we'll use all of those. So we've got 1 plus 5i. minus x. So that's negative 5 plus 5i. We're going to be using that concept a fair bit later as we get into polynomials, as we get into uh, conic sections. Well, not so much there, but more in the quadratic section 3.2. So this idea of multiplying complex numbers together and ending up with an i squared that essentially negates the coefficient there, that's going to be something that will show up. So make sure you get comfortable with that, and then you'll be fine. All right. So there's uh, another concept we need to watch for. Let me just grab a new layer here. And that's a complex conjugate. And this will show up again oops, in our discussion on polynomials in chapter four. So if you've got A plus BI, the complex conjugate is a minus bi, and vice versa. If you've got a minus bi, the complex conjugate is a plus bi. And this really shows up when you have a, a complex number in a denominator. Say we've got, for example, two minus five i, and we're dividing that by one minus six i. So to do that, now we're dividing by a complex number that has its imaginary portion. So we're dividing by an imaginary number, which feels as bad as dividing by zero. So we don't like it. We need to get rid of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply top and bottom by the complex conjugate of the denominator. And we do that because it eliminates the imaginary number in the denominator. So if I multiply these two together, we've got firsts, 1 times 1. Outside is plus 6i. Inside is minus 6i. So you can see it eliminated those. And last is minus 36i squared. So those get eliminated. The i squared changes the sign, and we now have 1 plus 36 in our denominator. That is much nicer We're dividing by an integer. In our numerator, we've got first, 2 times 1 is 2. Outside, 2 times 6i is 12i. Inside, negative 5i times 1 is minus 5i. And last, we've got negative 30i squared. 
once again, the I squared basically just changes the sign of that term. So now we've got 2 plus 30, which is 32. 12i minus 5i is plus 7i. So now we've done our division. And everything looks good, except we need to be in this form a plus b i. We need the real separated from the imaginary. So let's go ahead and do that. That 32 37ths is real plus 7 37ths times i is our imaginary portion. And that's what I get to type into my math lab. It is imperative that you watch for that in my math lab, that you separate out the real and the imaginary. They will mark you wrong, and you, it gets frustrating. But as long as we know we need to do that and we do it, we'll be fine. We'll get the green box and be able to move on. So that is the extent of section 3.1. Do you have any questions on any of that that we've covered? Okay, I'm not seeing any or hearing any, so I'll assume we're doing okay. Um, let's practice a couple. And then we'll jump into 3.2, which is going to feel different enough that I want to make sure we get kind of a little break between the two. So let me go ahead and write out a problem or two and have you work on them. And we've got 12 plus 3i. And to that, we are adding negative 8 plus 5i. Go ahead and work on that one while I keep writing a couple problems out. Let's do negative 3 minus 4i minus 8 minus i. Let's do square root of negative 4 times the square root of negative 6. I'm sorry, negative 36. And let's do i divided by 2 plus i. So we have four problems for you to practice. And let me know when you have a solution. Okay, that sounds like we're in a submarine and we're trying to get a fix on a torpedo target.
Anybody have any solutions? Did somebody start to talk? But... Uh, for the first one, I have negative 11 plus 36i. Okay. For the second one, I have 28 plus 21i. Okay. I'm not sure about the next one, but I got 12. I don't know if that's correct. All right. And then for the last one, I got one part of it, but I don't have the other part yet. So. OK. Yeah, that's where I'm at. All right. Thank you. Did anybody else get any answers that are different from those? Well, my answers were different. Uh, for the first one, I had four plus eight I. Okay. And the second one, I had. Uh, well, looking back at the second one, I think I messed up on that one, but I had five minus three I. And then right. uh, the the third one. I also had 12, but I'm I'm wondering, is that supposed to be negative 12? Go ahead and write that down. I didn't get the last one. I haven't figured that one out yet. Okay. Let me see what we've got here. So if we're adding together, we're going to add the real. And add the imaginary separate. So I've got 12 plus a negative 8. So 12 plus a negative 8 would be 4. And then 3i plus 5i would be 8i. So I agree with the red answer for this one. Now here we're subtracting. I'm going to go ahead and distribute that negative through. I'm, because subtracting is adding a negative. So I'm just going to change the two signs of those and add. Again, the real and the imaginary are separate. So negative 3 plus negative 8 would be the negative 11. And negative 4 plus 1 is minus 3. So we had the negative 3i here. Interestingly enough, we had the negative 11 up there. So the two of those together combined gave us this answer, which is kind of fun. Um, so let's look at what we've got here. We needed to take care of the negative first, right? So I'm going to just go ahead and put an i out in front. So I've got i times i is i squared. The square root of 4 is 2. The square root of 36 is 6. 2 times 6 is 12. As we said, i squared is negative 1, so I've got negative 1 times 12, that would be negative 12. And now looking at this one, it's a little, it's kind of like what we did up here, the complex conjugate. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by the conjugate of the denominator, which is 2 minus i. So in the numerator, I've got 2i just kind of distributing this i through to both of those. 2i minus i squared. And I'll take care of that in a minute. I like sometimes to write the intermediate steps. Here, I'm going to go ahead and foil this. So I've got first, 2 times 2 is 4. Outside is minus 2i. Inside is plus 2i. If you have worked with the difference of two squares, you can see why this is working out this way. 
remember how we could factor the difference of two squares into the square root of the first plus the square root of the second times the square root of the first minus the square root of the second. That's the same thing we're seeing here. And then we have last, i times negative i is minus i squared. Okay, so let's see. i squared is negative one, both places. These two are gonna cancel. So I've got negative one, oh, it's a negative negative one, right? So that's plus, plus two i. And down here in the denominator, this is minus a negative one. So that's plus one. We've got four plus one, so that's five. Breaking it into the real and imaginary portions. Just meet those. All right, so these would be our solutions. 4 plus 8i, negative 11 minus 3i, negative 12, and 1 fifth plus 2 fifths i. Did that help? I wish we were face to face so I could see the look on your in your eyes, see the your facial expressions, and know how you're doing. It's that. very it's very confusing. Yeah, I ended up uh, multiplying wrong. I was so much in a hurry, I wrote down the wrong number. Oh yeah, that's that'll get us. So Phil, was it you that said it was confusing? I thought I recognized yep. your voice. Yes. Yes. Where am I losing you? Well, I'm not lost. It's just, I mean, there's so many, you know, you go back and forth, I guess, that okay. it's confusing. It's, it's keeping track of where you're at in the problem that's confusing. Oh, yeah. Okay. And like I say, we will be using this. So tonight, go ahead and do the 3.1 homework. That's where we talk about I. That will give you that practice. And prep you for 3.2, where this is going to show up again. Um, rather than jump into 3.2, let me put some more problems up. And let's get some more practice. I think that will help us more than anything right now. I'm going to make these disappear, but. We can pull them back up if we need to. Let's do seven minus two i plus four minus five i. And thirteen plus nine i. Minus eight plus two i. So one plus three i times one minus four i. We'll do five over two plus three i. Go ahead and work on those for a little bit. We've got about three minutes left in class. So take a couple minutes and then I'll get your answers.
So for the first question, I have 11 minus 7i. Okay. And for the second one, I have 5 plus 7i. All right. And then the third is 13 minus i. And then the last one, I got 10 divided by 13 minus 10 divided by 13 minus 15 divided by 13 times i. Oh boy, it kicked me out. I'm back now. Hopefully you can hear me. Did you get the rest of the answer or do you need to, re need to repeat it? I missed the imaginary part. Oh, uh, so it's 10 divided by 13 minus 15 divided by 13 times I. Okay. All right. Did anybody else get something different from that? Okay, let's see what we've got here. We've got the real portion, seven plus four, that's 11, so we're good there. And the imaginary, negative two plus a negative five is negative seven i, so I agree with this solution. Over here, I'm gonna change the minus to plus a negative, basically change the signs and add. So we've got the real portion, 13 minus eight, or 13 plus a negative eight, would be 5, and 9i plus a negative 2i is 7i, so I agree with this solution. Taking this product, we've got firsts, 1 times 1 is 1, minus 4i plus 3i is a negative i, minus 12i squared, which becomes plus 12, Add that to our original one gives us 13. This looks like a good solution. And I, I feel like I'm going fast, but we have a, we're out of class time. I, I'll keep working on this a bit, but so multiplying by our complex conjugate, distributing that through, we get 10 minus 15 I, which matches our numerators. On the denominator, we've got two times two is four, minus six i, plus six i, minus nine i squared. And as we saw, the i squared changes the sign. These two will cancel, and I'm left with four plus nine, which is our 13. So this is looking really good. I know that that got rushed at the end, but hopefully the practice seeing it multiple times helps a bit. Do you have any questions? I apologize for that feeling of rush at the end. Okay, well, if we don't, we can call it a day. I do suggest, if you can do it, to go ahead and take care of the 3.1 homework tonight. Tomorrow, we'll get into 3.2, which is the quadratic formula, quadratic equations, zeros, and so on. That's a, a good chapter because a lot of things we do in this world can be modeled with a quadratic. And so this will allow us to examine the world in a slightly different way. So have a good night. And I will see you tomorrow. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. You too.